Hey guys, I'm Luke Huckaba. I'm a virtualization architect on the Managed Vert team here at Rackspace. This is part two of my architecting a DR solution with SRM, which this is the actual architecting version of it. So in the last, the last one, we talked about planning and getting everything together and where do you start. So now let's actually get started on this. When I say get started, we want to know exactly what it is we're protecting. You want to know the total number of VMs, how much total storage you're going to replicate. You want to know how many total networks you're actually going to need to configure at your target side. You're going to know or need to know the total tiers. And by tiers, I mean if you rate your applications, tier 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, or break them up into multiple applications, however you want to do that. That was in the planning. You should have an idea of what you're going to do here. So let's map all that stuff out put it on paper, get an idea of, you'll have an idea of everything you need, which that ties directly into your vCenter installation. When you go into the vCenter installation, you want to really look at your requirements based on the number of hosts and number of VMs that you're going to have. The simple installation, simple installation works fine for just about everybody. It's a very simple install. It installs everything you need on one box. It has SSO, it has vCenter, it has the web client, it has the inventory service, you can install VUM on it has everything you need. Its base requirements though are two CPUs, 12 gigs of RAM, and 60 gigs of hard drive space. If you're gonna put the database server on there, you're obviously gonna to wanna to bump it up some more and, and keep track of enough allocated space for that database. You can go to the custom install. There's nothing wrong with going to that one. The custom install though could require as many as eight additional, or eight total VMs. And you might be thinking, well, what are all those eight VMs? Well, if you go to SSO and an HA configuration, that's two. Then you have vCenter, you have your web client, you have the inventory service, you have VUM, you have SRM, and your database server. So there's your eight servers right there. That's, that's a nice way to go if you want to keep everything broken out, but it could stack up quickly. Like, so in this, if you had your eight total VMs, they could be using as many as 16 CPUs or 16 cores and 32 gigs of RAM. You can build this one simple VM, or the one simple installation with similar specs and knock out the same thing and you have one VM to work on instead of managing all these additional eight. There's also the, the option to go to the appliance. The appliance is a great tool. Uh, it deploys very easily and it, it, it works. It supports 100, 100 hosts and 3,000 VMs, which for most people that'll work just fine. The problem with that is, is you still need a separate Windows VM for SRM and VUM, which that kind of ties into my SRM installation. Where are we going to install SRM? If you go with the simple install, you can tack it right on there. It doesn't need a whole lot. It's largely idle until you're running SRM, until you're running a failover or a test. It only needs one CPU, two gigs of RAM, and like five gigs of storage space. So it can easily go in here. Or you can create your own VM and separate it out. It just really depends on what you want to do. Personally, I like the simple install with SRM on top of it with a separate database server. It's just, I don't know, that's just how I like to do it. Also, when you're setting up SRM, it kind of doesn't really tie specifically into SRM, but you want to think about how your cluster is laid out. There's a few things you want to do here. VMware recommends that you have a separate management cluster, and that would be great in this custom installation because you would have all those eight VMs on one separate cluster, say maybe a two node cluster. If vCenter crashes, you know there's one of two nodes that that VM has to live on that you can get to and power it on. If you're in a 16 node cluster and it crashes, you have to connect to all 16 of those nodes to try to figure out where your vCenter VM was running. I mean, that's fine, but you can write a PowerShell script to connect to all 16 of them and then issue a power command. That works too, I've done that. Um, but that'll also help you down the road. When you set up SRM, you want to set up a separate vSwap LUN for all the vSwap files for your VMs that are being replicated. The reason why I bring that up is say you have 100 VMs and each VM has 16 gigs of RAM. Well, whenever you power on a VM, it creates a vSwap file that's equivalent to the size of the RAM. So that'd be 100 files that are 16 gigs each. So that can kind of add up. That's what, like 1600 gigabytes. You don't want to replicate that traffic because it's non-value added at all. Um, it can slow your performance down as far as replication and it's just additional overhead you don't need. So I'd recommend you separate that out. And if you have a separate management cluster, you don't have to separate the vSwap, but in your compute cluster, you could. And it's configured at the cluster level, and then you go into each hype and configure it from there, each host configure it from there. Determining that vSwap size is really kind of up to you. What we do here is we say we double the amount of physical RAM in a cluster and use that as our vSwap size. That allows you to go two to one on your memory over, over provisioning and still kind of have 
you should be just fine because chances are your VMs are not going to use 100% of their RAM. Now that vSwap file is one-to-one, -one, so you have to keep that in mind. So lastly, you should have a complete architecture by now. You have everything you need to go ahead and start building it out, which, like I said, the next post or next part three is going to be building it out. I hope you stick around and wait for that one. But uh, before I move on to that, the complete architecture, you have a clear picture of everything now. You know exactly what you need to build. You know if you're going to build a management cluster, how many hosts, your compute cluster, how many hosts, you know how many networks you're going to have at both sides and they're mapped out already, which is which. You know which LUNs or volumes are going to replicate and those are mapped one to one and you have everything you need. So now let's go ahead and build it. This is my favorite part. So stick around for that part three and don't forget to follow me on Twitter at TapHuck and I'll see you guys later.